Don't spend time to save money. Oh my God, we repeat that every week to all of investors. You know the guy who, who does everything himself, the one-man band? I mean, some people will have seven or eight property. They're still doing their own taxes because God forbid they would spend money on an accountant or they, they do their own maintenance, their own management, their own, they're spending time to save money. That is the stupidest thing in the world <laughs> because think, no, Scott. All right. Well, welcome back to the Real Estate Investors Money Matrix podcast. Scott Ulmer here. Got a very special guest with me today, Daniel St. Jean. We want to say it the right way. If we were pronouncing it in a different uh, language, it would not flow quite as easily, but uh, we don't want to butcher it. So Daniel, first and foremost, Ontario, Canada, thank you for being here. Uh, really, really excited. In fact, as we were chatting uh, right before this, I was saying that you've got a very impressive biography and you have a couple of, of associations and groups that you are, are a part of. And, um, and rather than me, uh, Try to go through those. Would you mind just giving a kind of a quick biography of, of you? Uh, where'd you? How'd you get started? And tell us about these associations, if, if you don't mind. Yes. So um, what happened is that I was a consultant for the federal government in Ottawa, which for you American folks is the capital of the country, uh, our country. And um, my wife was a consultant in the um, IT industry in, in Ottawa. But seven years, eight, sorry, nine years ago, she decided that um, her passion has always been around wine. And so she wanted to move to this area of Canada, which is the Niagara area where all the wineries, the good wineries are. And there's a program here that she wanted to take for a year. And I thought, well, you're not moving there for a year. I'm moving with you. But then if I'm moving with you, we are leaving our jobs behind. Let's find something that we can do um, without being in Ottawa to make money. So we decided to, we looked at real estate and then we started uh, 10 years ago uh, and or nine years ago with the idea of, um, being able to move here and we did and my wife took the course and then we've been traveling to all the wine countries in the world since so it's been a real party fantastic <laughs> and, okay. and, and work too yeah there you go and is there a particular wine this is personal preference is there a particular wine that she likes well she's very partial to cabernet franc and then i'm very partial to um malbec from mendoza argentina so we were there uh for a, a month a, a year ago two a couple of years ago and uh I can't remember how many samples of uh, <laughs> of Malbec we tried, but anyway, that's the good stuff. I like it. I like it. Very good. Very good. So, so it sounds like circumstance kind of uh, moved your your life, and and ultimately real estate was the driver that that was able to provide the the financial uh, aspect of your move, and 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 so you've been doing that ever since. Yes, we see we see real estate investing as a way to customize your life. And this actually, we, um, we, we founded and then now we run a real estate investing training club in, in, in Canada. And, uh, and our motto is customize your life. So everything we do is to help people get the time and the finances so they can finally customize their life. Because man, there's nothing better than actually this three days ago, we sat there with the calendar for 2022. We went through the 52 weeks and we're going to be gone 14 weeks next year. Um, Costa Rica, uh, England, Portugal, Greece, and the last end of the year, we don't know yet, but we have the whole year to figure it out, but we'll be gone 14 weeks. So, and re and re that, first of all, that's fantastic. Uh, I'm a little jealous if I'm being honest. Um, and, and, and the tie down is that real estate has, has been the driver and, and enabled you to do that. It sounds like, and by the way, I love the slogan, customize your life. You're able to really live the life that on your terms, when you can use real estate as, as your financial backing. Yes. And you know what? When you start with this idea of customizing your life, you realize that there are two absolutely key components. You need the money, but you also need the time. So in other words, if you want to make that money by flipping houses, which takes you 50 hours a week, 50, hour, 50 weeks a year, you're going to have the money, but you're not going to have the time. So this help you pick your strategy um, in terms of what strategy you want to use. We tend to use strategies now that are very passive. So um, 
in other words, we, yeah, we, we don't spend a whole bunch of time, you know, with the sledgehammer and the, uh, and the glue guns. <laughs> well, that, and that's very, very interesting. I'd, I'd like to ask you to take that a step further. So, so if I may repeat what I, what I heard to make sure I'm clear. So um, there are obviously a lot of ways uh, uh, that you can invest in real estate, and some of them require uh, you being very active. Others may be more so passive. So you guys strategically chose more of a passive path to give you the time that you, cre- that you obviously uh, yearned for and, and obviously that's kind of uh, facilitating your life. So can you, can you share a little bit more detail about what that strategy is and, and, and how does that translate to giving you more time? So initially, uh, the first strategy that we used was rent to own, just like you guys. So unlike you, who have done 4,000 or whatever, <laughs> many thousands of that uh, of them. Um, I've only set up 51, but, uh, and we still have 11 in place. Uh, we've completed 40 and 38 of those were successful. So we have a 95% success Good rate. So we're pretty happy about that. But unlike you, I don't have an office with people. It's me. So considering 51 in 10 years, that's not too, too bad. Plus 12 buy and hold um, with tenants and stuff. Uh, so that was more hands-on. But now we've moved to a strategy that I called RWA, Reserve Weight assigned so you find some really really good projects in pre-construction condos and we have a list of really strict criteria you reserve a unit at say five hundred thousand dollars you wait two years till the project is over and you assign it for 750 which happens here all the time so you've made a couple hundred thousand dollars on one unit over a couple of years without tenants without closing without mortgage without so right now that's what we're doing and, and it's going like crazy here <laughs> very interesting there that, that, that's uh, i've heard variations of that but what what kind of deposit do you have to put down in order to reserve your spot um, we usually try to negotiate. That's one actually of the, uh, the criteria. We usually end up with 10% at the beginning and then, uh, another 5% when construction begins and then 5% on closing at the end. But of course, because we will assign it before the end, really it's a 15% deposit. Very good. Very good. That's really neat. And so you're just the let, letting the market kind of do its thing. And as, as the project gets more attractive and, and closer to completion and more attention and promotion, uh, the values are inherently going to get uh, higher, more desire, and, and you simply assign your contract for, for the difference. That's creatively brilliant. Yeah, well, the key word in the, the key letter in the three is W, the wait. So, so you can't wait too long. You can't, whatever, but there's all kinds of criteria. But, and by the way, all of that is on our website. We have all kinds of information about that. But the point is, um, you know, while we were in Greece recently for three weeks, guess what? Our five units that we just reserved a year ago all went up by so much money while we were in Greece enjoying Greece. So I, I like that part. This is really passive. <laughs> for sure. That's very neat. That's very neat. So when prior to, to, to recording, we were talking about the, the one of the clubs that you have up there, um, that you have a real estate investing uh, training and education uh, that, that I believe is free. And, and can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, so we started that uh, four and a half years ago. Um, if anybody knows the what we call the Golden Horseshoe in Ontario, so if you know Toronto and you should know Toronto, the sports fan, because that's the team that won the basketball yes, championship. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. <laughs> and, and the Blue Jays are often in the news as well. So that's Toronto. And around, and which is at the end of Lake Ontario, and all around there's like a, a horseshoe, and that's what we call the Golden Horseshoe. And... Um, there's about, uh, what is it now, 9 million people living in that golden horseshoe. And um, so there's a lot of activity, lots lo- lots of uh, uh, of people in- interested in, in investing. So four and a half years ago, we started a club. We were meeting at, you know, in the ballroom at, of a hotel. At first, you know, they had 70 people, 80 people, 90 people, then 300 people in our last events. And then, of course, COVID happened and shut everything down. So now we're still doing everything online. But we are building a really interesting community. I think we're at 4,000 members right now. And yes, it's free. And it's always going to be free. Our concept here is like, you know, AM radio. You don't pay to listen to AM music, right? No. Who pays for that? The sponsors. So what we do is we will offer an incredible amount of information for free, but let our sponsors and our affiliates 
cover the cost and make us some money. So that that's that's our concept. So it's always going to stay free, but we are going to build something absolutely incredible. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it sure sounds like it. And I love the concept. And instead of charging the members, let the sponsors pay for it and, and give the education for free. That's really that neat. Exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. really, really neat. Let me go back to the RWA. That, that's really fascinating to me. I, I've seen uh, variations of that and, and uh, can't say that I've ever had that as a strategy in my arsenal of investing. So how do you choose the the um, the development that you guys want to, to reserve units in? I mean, I, I suspect it sounds like it's a lot of happy a lot of growth, a lot of, a lot of building up there, but I know you said you have kind of a, a long list of criteria, but what, what is, how do you choose the project? What are your initial uh, thoughts and guidelines? What, what are you looking for if, if someone were interested in doing something similar? Well, okay. First of all, you need, to, you need to like the area. In other words, I don't care how good the deal is. If, if it's in an area that I would not live there, that's out. I need to like the building. Me, I don't like those 40 story skinnies, pencil, needle, whatever, <laughs> uh, towers. I don't like that. So the ones that we're invested in are like, you know, not like 10 stories, more like an apartment building, but really luxurious. So I like to, I have to like the place and I have to like the building. Reputation of the builder, um, you know, th th that's key. How long the project is going to be. Um, where do we come in, uh, in, in the deal? In other words, this Saturday, we're going to, uh, again, in the horseshoe at a place that's called Newcastle. There's a, there's a project going there with 64 units. We are taking a member from our club. We have the bus is full, 50 seats. We know we're going to be buying all 64 units this weekend. And we are there before they even have a sign on the lot. There is not even a sign yet. There's nothing has been done. We're going to go there and clean this place up and buy it at uh, actually the price they're going to give us is 50,000 under what the list price will be when they release it to public. But of course, by the end of Sunday, there won't be anything to release to public. But so this is another criteria, make some money in the buy, um, reputation. And uh, when do you come in? If you come in three quarters of the way, you're going to make yeah. some money. But if you come in at, at the critical point <laughs> so basically <laughs> if i reserve this weekend four units that means that two weeks from now i could assign them at the public price and make two hundred thousand bucks are we kidding me here so <laughs> this is the, those are some of our criteria yeah th those numbers kind of make sense uh <laughs> That's some good math. That's some good math. And it sounds like in this case, uh, yeah, if I'm reading it correctly, maybe you, you had an inroads with the builder that allowed you to get in there ahead of the, the general public. Is that uh, my, my looking at it the right way? Yes, absolutely. The builder is a really good friend. He has currently 18 projects in the area. Uh, so that's the first one we're taking our members to. Um, second week of January, we're taking them to another building with 150. In February, we're taking them to uh, 114 townhouses. And every single time we're going to have front row. Actually, he doesn't call it front row. He says backstage. So we're <laughs> going to get in at, at the absolute lowest possible price. So um, it, you can't always do that, but try to to be in at the earliest possible and then then hopefully you're in an area where um, you know it, it's going to grow naturally sure and obviously on, on the developer or builder's behalf when they can show that they've got the the units sold pre-sold uh reserved whatever you want to call it uh that allows them to kind of plan accordingly their sales and marketing can 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 uh be less and and they can focus on the next project that they can represent that to their lender that may be looking to see what the 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 activity is and so it sounds like it, it's certainly a win for the builder as much as it is for for you as the buyer yeah well see one of the law uh, it, um and it's probably different in the states but here in ontario if you put a deposit on a condo your money goes in trust with the lawyer. The money does not go to the builder. The money goes in trust to the lawyer. So here's what happened. That means that the law, the builder can now go to the bank and said, Mr. Banker, we have $42 million sitting in the trust account here. Can we borrow 42 million from you or whatever it is to build this building? So that's a plus for them. But for us, it means that if the builder, for whatever reason, something happens and they don't complete the project, then the lawyers by law have to give us back our deposits. So this is really low risk. Yeah. I was just going to ask you about the risk factor. You, you, you answered that. Thank you. Well, let me, let me ask you the, the housing market down here, uh, plodding along and, and COVID hits and, and next thing you know, there's chatter all over about foreclosure tsunami and there's going to be this next 2008 repeat. And in the States, it was obviously uh, second only to the Great Depression in the 20s. And so here we are and, and, and the seller's market has just been on fire. It's been absolutely contrary to 
polar opposite of what everybody thought, and and it's been continued to be. And we see it slowing down a bit. We're seeing some, uh, which to us is, is as investors is 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 very welcome news. But um, whether there's a crash, whether there's a shift and adjustment, whatever you want to call it, uh, we find obviously people on both sides of the aisle giving their opinion. I'm curious to know what are your thoughts. First of all, what's the state of the the housing market in Canada, and what are your thoughts on the future? Okay, Scott. You got to word this question better because that's like me asking you, what's the what's the weather like today in the U.S.? It will vary from state to state and from okay. So the real estate market in Canada is goes by province, goes by city, goes by even you know uh, the north part of Oshawa is not the same market as the south part of Oshawa. So it's really low. But overall in the GTA, um, we don't actually buy anything in the GTA anymore. We we go around it because in the GTA it's crazy. Um, from I live in Niagara on the lake. So if people know Niagara Falls on the Canadian side, you drive about 15 minutes, you're in this beautiful little town from the 1700 called Niagara on the lake. Um, and here from September 30th last year to October 1st this year, prices have gone up 68%. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now that's very, very high. And that's because it's Niagara on the lake. But if you were in Toronto, it would be 28, 29, Niagara Falls, about 40. So yes, it's, it's, it's gone nuts. And the reason is simply um, a shortage. We have, let's say there's a hundred people going out on the weekend looking for houses. There's only 32 houses for sale, let's say. So of course, when these people pulled multiple offers. So last year, I remember in September, we put a, mark, a house on the market for $5.99. We sold it for $8.25. Okay, fine. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Those aren't bad numbers either. So, and, and that's a very good point, you know, about provinces and, and it's a very, very, very much a general question. So how about the, the areas outside of the GTA? Um, um, do you see any sort of shift or correction that's forthcoming in the market? Are you see things continuing to, to, to steadily increase? No, um, all of the reports that we get from the banks, from the Bank of Canada, from um, all of the different agencies and from all the experts in the real estate market are looking at this as a five to seven year problem. The problem here is, uh, as I said, inventory, but that's, here's one thing you need to know. Canada brings in more new immigrants here in a year than California does. So, mm. and, and you know what I mean? So the, and the population number is very different. So people come in and now that the borders have been reopened for us, people are coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, and oh my God, there's no place to live. So they, they are looking, so they're building like crazy, but they're nowhere near as building as much. So this is not going to go away tomorrow. This, this is going to be many years and uh, which is bad for um, you know the young people who are trying to get a house but that's when a, a business like uh, who does rent to own can really be of assistance you guys you guys are, are angels for for so many of these people so congratulations on, on doing that for people thank you thank you well and as far as the the supply and demand and, and the inventory shortage um, when it comes to to finding good deals um, uh, have you seen those has it been hard to find good deals and good opportunities as an investor Yes, but hmm. <laughs> at the same time, you know, if if you have the right connection, I mean, I, I get offers every week from what they call pocket listing or from, uh, you know, houses that are not listed. I, I get these offers all the time. So in other words, if I was still looking at buying single family homes in and around the GTA, I, I would be able to... Um, to find them, um, you, <laughs> you know, when they say you, you've heard this expression, your network is your network. Sure. Um, and, and a lot of people don't understand that, which is too bad. Um, I wrote a bestseller actually in 2005 on networking. So that that is like a mission to me to tell people you got to build your network. You got to surround yourself with with all the right people. You got to be seen. You got to be known. You got to be connected. And so when when there's a pocket listing coming, the phone rings and they call you rather than anyway. So the, the network is really important. And if you are well connected, if you take in the time to build a network, the deals come. But um, Still not as good as the RWA strategy, so that's was, what we're doing. Yeah, I was going to say that no, no matter the deal, it'd be hard to beat that. Well, one of the things my dad taught me a long time ago is that you need to tell everyone you see and everyone you meet, and tell the world what you do, and and uh, and be proud of it, and things will start to come your way. And uh, it, it just coincides exactly with uh, your net worth uh, determines your net worth. I, I couldn't agree more. So, uh, well, I've got a couple of personal questions I, I want to ask that that are more curiosity. So, um, there was a book written by Tim Ferriss a few years ago. Ago. He's an American author, and uh, I think it was called Tools of Titans, and it was about 
morning routines. There were other parts of it as well, but I've always been fascinated by morning routines and what primes the pump, what gets you going in the morning. So do you have a morning routine that you uh, do on a daily basis? Yes. So as soon as I'm out of bed, the first thing I do, turn on my laptop and then I look, I go to the weather channel because their motto is know your, know the weather, plan your day. So I'm never cut you know, by surprise by rain, snow or wind or whatever, because first thing I do at six in the morning is I know what's coming today so I can dress properly or plan my day properly. So that's my routine. Then it's coffee time. There it is. <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, um, is, if there was one influential person in your life that that uh, had an impact on you, uh, who would it be and how do they impact your life? Um, two people, if, if it's OK with you, please. Uh, Jim Rohn. Oh, yeah. One of my favorites. Oh God, I've read, read all of it. Uh, well, I, I used to be a member of the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers, which means by association, we were also well connected with the NSA National Speaker Association. So I've, I've met with uh, Jim Rohn many times and read all of his material and constantly quote him and, and silly go back over his books. But that would be number two. Number one is uh, Les Brown. And Les Brown wrote actually the introduction to my book back in 2005. But uh, he's the man. He is the man. <laughs> and what and, and Jim Rowe, in fact, I was uh, I had a podcast last week and was sharing. We were talking about kind of the journey and, and as much as the destination. And 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, one of Jim Rohn's famous quotes was it's not um, it's not what you accomplish. It's who you become in the process. Am I Am I close on that? Close, quote? Yeah, but I think that that was from, uh, oh God, I, I, yeah, there's going to be a whole bunch of people who are going to look at that and go, <laughs> who said that? I think it's either Nance, anyway, maybe it is Jim Rohn, but uh, the one, one of the quote that, uh, that we live our life by, and knowing what I know about you, I, I think you're going to be, uh, you're, you're going to like that one, although you know it already, it's by Zig Ziglar. You can get everything in life you want, if you help enough other people get what they want. God, that should be the motto for what for your business there, because what you're doing is helping people get a house. And by ricochet, you're benefiting from that. But mainly it's because of what you do. Amen. Well, and, and thank you for that. And, and, and ironically, or maybe not, that's one of our slides and some of our PowerPoints. We end with that. that <laughs> you, you, so we, we, we believe that wholeheartedly. You help enough people achieve your, their dreams, and uh, they're going to help you achieve yours as well. So fantastic. Well, well a couple other quick questions here. Uh, is there a, is there a, and these are somewhat off the real estate topic, but again, I, I am a curious guy. I always find it interesting, and, and I know that our listeners the same. Um, if there was one book that you'd recommend uh, that has, uh, I'll just leave as a recommendation what comes to mind oh god well any of the three or four books by uh, uh les brown definitely and anything that was written by by um uh, jim Rohn, but also also uh, brian not not brian tracy what's oh my god you put me on the spot i forgot <laughs> um it's about networking it's uh how, uh, dig your well before you're thirsty which is probably the best book ever written on um on um, networking. So I love that book because I use a lot of that um, earlier on to, to build my network and then wrote the book when it was successful. When I was successful, people were asking me, so how come you're, it's, everything seems to be so easy for you. Well, it's not. It's just that I know my, my database, my Rolodex, for those of you who don't know what a Rolodex is, uh, I don't know seven, 8,000 names. So when I'm looking for something, that I can find it fairly quickly when you, when you email 7,000 people. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I appreciate that. I've never heard of that book. It's a great title, by the way. Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. I'm going to have to check that dig out. Your, yeah, Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. Sorry that the, the name of the author. Uh, of course, as soon as we end, <laughs> right, we right. it'll come back to you. Sure, sure. Well, uh, uh, one other quick question. Um, what advice would you give to your 25-year-old self? Oh, that's easy. I'm full of putting you on the spot, by the way. No, 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 no. That's easy because we were just talking about that this morning. Uh, okay. Don't spend time to save money. Oh my God, we repeat that every week to all of investors. You know, the guy who, who does everything himself, the one man band. I mean, some people will have seven or eight property. They're still doing their own taxes because God forbid they would spend money on an accountant or they, they do their own maintenance, their own management. They're, all, they're spending time to save money. That is the stupidest thing in the world <laughs> because think, no, Scott, 
Right now, as we are speaking, there is a building somewhere or a few buildings in the state that are printing dollar bills. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Money will never run out. Is there a place in the U.S., is there a, a company or a manufacturing plant in the U.S. that right now is making more time? No, no. That's so what... why are you spending a limited resource to save a unlimited resource. Does that make any sense to you? It uh, makes perfect sense. It's trading dollars for hours and you only have so many of them. Well, and you know what? As you start getting a little, maybe I, maybe I would not have said, well, actually, no, your question was, what would I say to myself at 25? Yes, because at 25, of course, you don't think that way. When you get a little older, and I just turned 71, uh, when you get a little older uh, and you're looking at ahead at the, you know, what's left, you're going, okay, this is, so next year, Laurel and I, our plan is we're going, to, we're not, we're not even thinking about money anymore. We're not thinking about money. We're thinking about time. So when somebody brings us a project, we're not asking how much money can we make with this? We're asking how much time is this going to take? I don't care how much money it brings. If it takes too much of my time, which is very limited, goodbye. That's we're it. looking for things. And that's why the RWU strategy is so amazing because once you've done the initial work, you go on vacation and then yeah. two years later, you just make your money. I love it. So it's not taking too much of the time, but please, people, please, please, please do not spend time to save money. That is not a good idea. <laughs> I love it. I got to tell you, you know, you, you never know when you're getting to know somebody on these, uh, um, you know, whether there's a, a synergy or a connection or even what kind of information or responses they're going to going to share. Uh, this has been great. I, I really enjoyed uh, your, your responses and, and just the chance to chat with you a few minutes. So, so uh, thank you for, for sharing. And, and uh, I've got some good takeaways myself here, which, which is always, always nice to have. So, well, the, the, my final question is really, how can people find you if, if they're interested in uh, what you've said, they like your style they like kind of what, what you've shared um, what's the best way for people to, to, to get in touch with you and, and take them in if you would and just kind of share some of the, the the ways they can get in touch with you and maybe ways they can work with you well the easiest thing is just to go to the website for our um our club as i said so the club is called right club r-e-i-t-e -E, which is very simple real estate investing and training training and education club so w-w-w-t-h-e-r-e-i-t-e -E club.com and then you'll find me there you can just ask me for connection whatever and you know what i'm on there all the time i reply to people i connect with people i'm, I'm a people person and and you you um you had a really interesting uh, it's funny you have no idea how well connected we are because i just finished a webinar recently where the theme was that i was telling people that real estate is a people business that's one of your lines there on, on the page where that explains about you. It actually starts a paragraph by saying real estate is a people business. And the reason why I, I want to, to put that in the head of my real estate investors is that they're taking time learning about cap rates, about cash flow, about the vendor take back, about all of this. But some of them absolutely suck at dealing with people you know what? <laughs> That's not going to work. Yeah. That's not going to work. So it's a people business. Yes, there are buildings involved and there's money involved, but at the bottom, if you, if you know how to work with people, deal with people and help people, the rest, you always find somebody who can help you explain cap rates and whatever. But man, if you, they're not there when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody and you need to do a transaction or make a sale or something. You need to invest a good portion of your resources into becoming really good at dealing with people. Great advice. Great advice. Well, Daniel, I've got to tell you, I, I've enjoyed this and, and uh, I want to say thank you again for your, your time and, and for your candor and for sharing. And uh, it's been a real pleasure. And, and uh, now everybody knows how to get, get a hold of you. And uh, I've got some takeaways, probably have some other questions for you as we go. But I want to say thank you again. And uh, I hope our paths get to cross again real soon. Me too. Thank you very much. All, Thanks. Right. All right. Nice to see you. Have a great rest of your day. All right. All right.